hands here, I have the Lumex S5, which I've been testing out for the past couple of weeks. That little intro sequence was all shot on the S5, and that was my first time shooting video with this camera. I've also tested it quite a bit shooting a lot of stills. Now, I should mention Lumex Australia or Panasonic have provided me with this camera, but they did ask that I provide my honest opinion of the camera, which I aim to do in this video. I did want to spend a couple of weeks with it, really testing it out in different circumstances before commenting on the camera. So I've tested it out by shooting some landscape photography, portrait photography, street photography, time-lapse photography, and of course I've tested out the video as well. If you don't know too much about the S5, it's a mid-range full-frame mirrorless camera from Lumex in terms of its price. However, when you look at the specs that this camera provides, it actually competes with a lot of the top-range cameras out there. You're getting a 24 megapixel full-frame sensor in a really small and compact weather-sealed body. You're getting 10-bit 4K video up to 60 frames per second. Of course, it has inbuilt image stabilization. You're getting full HD slow-mo up to 180 frames per second. It also has dual native ISO, which is really great in low light. It also has Vlog pre-installed, offering 14 stops of dynamic range, a full articulating touchscreen, twin card slots. It also offers shooting modes like high-res mode, time-lapse mode, and live composite mode, which I'll go into a little bit more detail later on. All this, and you're looking about 3,000 for the body only here in Australia, around 2,000 in the US. Unlike so many cameras out there available in this mid-range price, you're really not missing out on a lot of those specs that some of the higher price cameras offer. But that's enough info, let's jump in and see how this camera performed. On paper, this camera really stands out for its video features. However, as I found out, it's actually a really great camera for shooting stills as well. I've tested out shooting a range of different styles from time-lapse, street, portrait, landscape, and it has performed really well under all conditions. As a 24 megapixel full-frame camera, for me personally, it sits right within that sweet spot of having a large enough sensor, but not too big, meaning your files are still manageable and the physical size of the camera is actually quite small for a full-frame camera. For me, shooting street photography always gives me a really good first impression of the camera. You find out if the autofocus tracks well and how fast it is. You find out if it's easy to navigate your settings and quickly compose a shot. Although I didn't have too many interesting subjects to shoot that day, the actual camera itself performed really well. I found shooting both street and portraits with this camera. The auto eye and autofocus in general performed pretty well with nearly all these shots in focus. When shooting landscape images, having the ability to use the high res mode to shoot 96 megapixel raw images on a tripod, which actually stitches pixels together, was a super handy feature if you're looking for that extra detail in a landscape image or to blow it up for prints. The other feature I was keen to test out was the live composite mode, which worked really well. This feature allows you to select your frame. The camera will then automatically only add areas of additional light to that original image, making it perfect for things like light trails or star trails. You can leave this running as long as you like and you will get the preview on the screen. This is another feature I can see myself using a lot of, and I'm not sure why it's not included in all mirrorless cameras. The last thing that's really important for me is a camera's ability to shoot time lapses. A lot of cameras don't have great options or setting when it comes to time lapse, you have to take an additional intervalometer along with you, which isn't ideal. The great thing about the Lumex S5, it has plenty of options and the time-lapse settings are very easy to navigate. Thank you to Panasonic who have given you full options on whether you wish to process the time-lapse yourself by using the raw images or quickly generate the clip in camera. You can easily do both. I actually find it quite frustrating in some cameras that don't give you the option to do both and sometimes you have to select one or the other, you can't do both at the same time, you would think it's quite an easy firmware update to fix. It's really handy, you can also switch off the screen when your time-lapse is running, and I found the battery lasted really well when I was shooting this long time-lapse sequence. So overall, I was really impressed with this camera in terms of its stills performance, which you actually don't hear a lot about when it comes to this camera. So moving on to the video performance. I guess there is a reason this camera gets a lot more talk around video. For its price, you are getting really great video, and there's no doubt the quality of this 10-bit 4K vlog footage is right up there. It grades really nicely, and the dynamic range is actually really impressive. Here, I've simply applied some of the Lumex LUTs, which you can download, and with minimal changes, the log footage that comes standard with this camera looks really nice. 
For slow motion, you've also got up to 180 frames per second in full HD, and even this upscaled to 4K in post has turned out pretty well. I should mention that although you're getting 24 to 30 frames per second full frame uncropped, the 50 to 60 frames per second does actually have a crop on this camera. For me personally, previously having a camera that had a crop on all 4K footage, the most frustrating part of that was not being able to vlog properly. Having a crop at 24, 25 and 30 frames per second was the most frustrating part on the Lumex S5 that's not an issue, you can shoot 24 to 30 uncropped. I did do a bit of a test vlogging with this camera, so let's have a quick look at that footage. So just doing a little bit of a vlog test with the S5, I've got the 20 to 60 millimeter kit lens on, which is a really nice focal length to vlog at. I've also got the Rode Video Micro on there, which is a really lightweight mic as well. So this setup is super light, super compact, and it means it's really easy to vlog with, it's really nice. I'm just holding on to the camera body doing this, so it's probably not the most stable, but we'll also give that inbuilt image stabilization a nice test as well. Obviously the other thing that makes this a good vlogging camera, you've actually got the reversible screen. So I probably wouldn't buy it just for vlogging because it is a really good camera if you only plan to vlog. But if you're planning to do a little bit of vlogging and you want really high quality video specs, potentially a really great option. Shooting handheld, the IBIS performed really well, which is a really handy feature to have for both photo and video. The fact that you're getting 10-bit 4K footage up to 60 frames per second, you're getting the inbuilt image stabilization, you're getting dual card slots, you're getting really dynamic log footage straight out of camera, makes this camera really great value for money. Whether you shoot photo or video, or ideally if you dabble a little bit in both, this is a really great camera to consider. Thinking back, if I had something like this when I started doing more video, it really does open up possibilities. And for anyone looking to get a little bit more serious with photography or videography, this is definitely a camera to consider. For now, I'm TK North. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you here very soon. Bye for now.